Hello, welcome back to my garden. I am finding this growing season to be quite a challenge. I've had some really hot weather and high humidity and both of those combine equal lots of fungal issues. Um, so I guess I should be calling this season some, uh, some wins some losses and a lot of just trying to maintain and as I show you around the garden you'll see what I'm talking about so let's go look so here is um, my first set or first grouping of potted plants and they're up against the house and they're mostly tomatoes I do have a couple of herbs in there and you'll see here for example didn't do so well. Um, it's like I said, it's been quite humid, quite hot, and those combined has created a powdery mildew issue. So if you see on this plant here, you're going to see um, that it's kind of um, light and it looks powdery. Well, that's not the powdery mildew. That's actually um, the sulfur fungicide that I sprinkled on there to help keep the powdery mildew in check. So this plant didn't fare so well. I am just going to let whatever remaining tomatoes are on there um, ripen up and I'm going to pull them off and just pull that out and chuck it. Um, whereas this plant has done a lot better. So you'll see the powder down below, but if I show you the leaves here, looking really good and I turn it over no powdery mildew plant next to it not so lucky <clears throat> so I just basically cut off all the affected leaves let those two guys ripen up and that one will also be pulled out if I go here not only did I develop powdery mildew Got a little bit of a blight issue. Let me see you show you right here. So that's the maintaining part. What I have been doing is cutting off all the blighted leaves and then maybe like every other week spraying with a copper fungicide. That isn't going to get rid of the blight but hopefully it'll slow down the process where the plant will be able to produce fruit and I can get some uh, harvest out of it. And I'm going to show you right here. Oops, get the leaves out of the way that I've got some growing. Same thing here. Just a little powder there for the powdery mildew. However, Again, get the leaves out of the way. You're going to see some beautiful tomatoes. But not everything's a total loss. I have a success right here. Look at that. This is lemongrass. And it has done so well. And it, it smells so good. So here's another tomato that's doing quite well. You'll see it's powdery down there, and that was the sulfur fungicide for the powdery mildew. But if you look up, it's quite healthy. It's kind of leaning over, it's so heavy. Now let me zoom in on these tomatoes, or maybe zoom out. This is called, um, I'm gonna mispronounce it, Tlacalula, and it's beautifully ribbed. We have friends in town that whose blackberries are already producing. I, they're they're gorgeous, and the hubs. He's quite a huge blackberry fan, and he's been upset that ours hasn't produced. So I just want to show him this. There you go, sweetie. Blackberries. I've seen a few little ones around here, and I'm actually quite excited that they're fruiting. So there's a success. Here, failure. I had another uh, heirloom tomato, I think it was pineapple, 
and it just died for whatever reason. So I replaced it with this. And this is, I think, Mr. Stripey. And I could have grown them from seed myself, but I felt really pressed for time. And it was kind of late in the season as um, these probably won't give me plants until maybe October. And if I started it from seed, you know, just tack on another month uh, for it to produce. And I just didn't want to wait that long. So what I did was I went out and bought new plant starts to replace those that have died. But to also give me a um, second round late season harvest. So I'll show you those as I go through the garden. These tomatoes are from seed that a friend sent me. And it's kind of an unknown variety. We're not quite sure what it's called, but I can tell you they are absolutely gorgeous. I love the purple coloring. And if you look under here, the striping is lovely, beautiful. I cannot wait. Look at how large that is. Cannot wait for them to ripen up. Little powder mildew issue. Hopefully getting that under control. Another success. Do you remember this peach tree? I think I planted it at the end of last season and then it got some black sooty mold and I had to spray it down. This was also one of those uh, end of the season lows, uh, you know, seven, seven or twelve dollar um, plants and it is called an ultra dwarf Babcock peach. I don't know how it's a dwarf because the thing is taller than I am. It's probably a good seven feet at this point. But let me zoom in and show you what I got going on here. Peaches. It is loaded with peaches. And I'm thinking in about another month, these here, these outer ones, will be ready for me to start picking and eating and enjoying. So exciting. Okay, so let me explain this little section of boxes, I guess, uh, planter boxes. They, had, they were being overwatered, basically. And you can see there the uh, cucumbers not looking so fabulous. The leaves turned really light. And the same with the squash here. You can see some of them are like a light yellow. So we cut back on the watering and then I fed them all compost tea. I'm sorry, not compost tea, fish emulsion. I fed them all some fish emulsion and these bounced back. You can see some of the newer leaves are darker. And not only that, it's fruity. So that was great in regards to the squash. Cucumbers, I think it was just a little too late. Not only was the plant stressed, I think the bugs knew that and they came in and started attacking it. So I've got leaf miners here. You'll see the little leaf miner trails. And then I've seen some Cucumber beetles sucking the life out of it. So this will probably be cut back soon. Um, I do have a couple of cucumbers down there that I will harvest and then I'll just cut everything out. Getting some good pottage <laughs> on my peppers. There and there, three different types of peppers. This is a golden Marconi that is um, paprika and that shishito and these guys are doing well and then you're gonna see the purple potted pole beans doesn't look so fabulous up here but down below you're gonna see some new green growth and so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna cut off I'm gonna pull off all the pods 
cut off the top here and hope that the new green growth will give me a second round of beans. We'll see. Borage. I don't know if you can see in there. I mean, it's, it's nasty looking. Can you see all the black stuff? It's infested, absolutely infested with aphids and tomato hornworms. Um, let me show you this leaf, kind of get in a close up here. Look at that, gross, right? The entire plant is covered in that nastiness. But I am not calling this a failure. I'm actually calling it a win. And I will tell you why. Tomatoes, this is my whole bed of tomatoes. They're pretty, pretty big, kind of show you. Not a single bug on any of the tomatoes. No bugs. This turned out to be a trap plant. A trap plant for all the little nasty boogers that you'd see climbing on your plants, including the tomato hornworm. So that's a win. That's called inadvertent excellence. Um, so I'm going to go with it. I'm thrilled. I did cut some out because frankly the bug population was just a teeny bit too healthy. I cut back the most uh, affected portions of the plant, but I'm leaving the rest. I, I'd rather have the bugs take over my borage than my tomatoes, let me tell you. And speaking of tomatoes, tomatoes all the way up this plant. And if I pan over down below, tomatoes all the way up this plant too. I mean, they're basically um, growing above me at this point. Tomatoes all up this plant as well. And I mean, it's true of all of these, all the different varieties I have. You look down below, I did have to um, put that sulfur on the, on the bases of these because they were also developing powdery mildew. And like I said, it's just a hot summer with a great deal of humidity. So if you saw the last episode or the last update, you'll know that I had corn growing here and broccoli growing here. Both were a dismal failure. I think I harvested like one ear of corn and the broccoli never sprouted. All it did was attract bugs. So I pulled them out and uh, decided to plant uh, new tomato plants, two different varieties there. And you're probably wondering why I didn't just clone some of the um, tomato plants from the other bed, you know, just basically pinch off the suckers and put it in the ground. That's because the tomatoes in the other bed also have blight. And you couldn't really tell, could you? Well, that's part of the maintaining. I pulled off all the affected leaves and again, sprouted, uh, sprayed it with copper and they look fabulous. And I'm not too worried about the blight on the other tomatoes. Um, they are so well established that I believe that they're just gonna produce right through it. So it isn't a big deal for me. But I didn't want to plant um, diseased tomatoes. I knew they were diseased and I didn't want to bring it into this raised bed. This raised bed has never had tomatoes in it. And so I just didn't want to do that to myself. I didn't want to cause more trouble. Uh, give myself more more problems than I needed. So, new plants, no blight. We move over, and I think there's like four squash plants in here. You can tell. And uh, let's see if we look in here. What are we going to find? I don't want to get my shot all the way. Little baby squash right there, and I have a few more in there. I also have little praying mantises in here um, as they're killing off whatever leftover aphids uh, that the broccoli had hiding in there. And remember I told you I was going to put bush beans at the end of this bed, a second round? Well there they are. I 
and they're doing great. They're looking wonderful. And I'm very happy with it. Okay, I gotta show you one more thing. It's not a big deal, but it's a big deal to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. So right here in amongst the mulch and the weeds and a couple of citrus trees, you're going to see watermelon. Three of them. Okay, so it's not a big deal. I'm sure most of you have grown watermelon. However, I have never grown watermelon. Not have I only never grown watermelon, I have never been able to get a seed to sprout. In that last raised bed I showed you where the, the new tomato plants are, I have seeded in that spot the last two years. And actually this past season, I reseeded it again, a second time. Nothing sprouted. So I just thought, okay, forget it. I'm just not meant to grow pumpkins. I'm sorry, uh, watermelons. I then, just kind of like as a fluke, like a last ditch, you know, whatever, forget it, decided just to put three seeds in here, and if they sprouted, great. If they didn't sprout, oh well, you know, I'm done with watermelons. And I was hoping at least one would come up. All three came up. Now, I don't know how they're going to do, because if I pull back, if I pull back the, um, the mulch. If you go down further, it's clay. You're going to see it's just clay soil. And um, I just don't know how the roots are going to deal with that. But I call this a win. Just the fact that I got them to sprout is a win. If I actually get watermelons, it's icing on the cake. And you're going to see, looks like the little leaf miners have gotten in there already. But like I said, if I actually get a watermelon, it, it's icing on the cake. I'm just glad to know that I'm not, not some sort of doofus that's unable to sprout seeds. Thanks for joining me on this garden tour. Until next time, have a wonderful day.